Man, last night was awesome. Happy Thursday, everybody. So, um, before I get into everything, I have a low and high act of kindness. Let's see, uh, my low is the fact that it's getting cold out, for sure. My high is not only did my mom make uh, her special ground beef soup, but we had a new episode of The Mass Singer. And my act of kindness was bringing the garbage and emptying the dehumidifier. Okay. Now that's all taken care of. Um, a bit of a backstory. So, when I was, um, my sophomore year at Horsehead, admittedly really wasn't very good. Largely because, all well, things I'll get into in December. But one thing I'll definitely say about that year was I remember for the Pops concert. Now, Pops was a big, um, I talked about this in my, uh, class and session choir video, look that up. Um, when he's, when, uh, for one of the songs he did for that concert was, um, a little song called, uh, uh, Footloose. And I pretty much, we had to sing that song for rehearsal so many times that I could almost tell you that song by heart. Like, it's just so iconic. Whether it's the 1984 version with Kevin Bacon or the one that came out, I want to say just a few years ago, but it's easily been more than 10. Get this, Footloose is celebrating 40 years. 40 years. That's insane. And... Like, what do I say to that? I mean, it's Footloose, guys. I mean, if you've never heard... Listen, I mean, I'm not a movie expert. I mean, I do like watching movies, but I pull a sound I've never seen Footloose. But the music from that movie is phenomenal. I almost want to watch it for just the music alone. Um, with that said, um, how very fitting that Robin Thicke began last night's episode by singing Footloose. Which was awesome. As well as um, the background dancers dancing to a Never by uh, Moving Pictures. Which is really cool. But now let's get to uh, the performances. I will say. There really was no bad performance at all last night. This really was a matter of somebody had to get eliminated. And therefore someone had to. You know, we, we can only have three for the Group A finale next week. I'll get to that in a second. So, again, all the performances were great. I mean, on a different day, it's someone else who goes home. In, rather than the person who did get eliminated. Uh, with that said, Showbird did Let's Hear It For The Boy by Denise Williams. Um, Ship did Almost Paradise. By uh, Ann Wilson and uh, Maya Garino. Now, for sure, like, uh, my favorite performance, well, actually, before I get to my favorite performance, I got to talk about the Buffaloes and Waiting for a Girl Like You, which makes sense. Buffalo is, Buffalo, the Buffaloes are actually the only guy, or guys, like, in Group A right now. Which I think is kind of funny. But hands down, my favorite performance of last night was the Woodpecker who would hold out for a hero by Bonnie Tyler. Like, okay, remember I told you said I never saw Footloose? I had heard the song Holding Out for a Hero before, and my first instance of hearing that song was actually watching Shrek 2. I mean, don't get me wrong, Shrek 2 is a great movie. But that was my first instance of hearing the song Holding Out for a Hero. I had never heard that song before. I mean... It's a great thing. If you, listen, look up uh, Holding Out for a Hero from Shrek 2. It's a great rendition of that song. Because, like, whenever I hear that song, I can't help but think of, um, you know, the, like, Shrek going to the castle trying to get to Fiona. No kidding. It was that moment on, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to be a hero someday. And I'm going to have that song playing in the background as I'm doing something really cool. 
I don't know what it is yet. I'm going to do that. Of course, again, the original holding out by, for a hero by Bonnie Tyler, that's still, you know, OG. That's still the best. And I remember, I never saw Footloose, but I did see the scene where that song is playing. And I don't want to give away what it is, but I will say it's, it's a combination of both underwhelming and fitting. That being said, and I will say, I never saw Footloose, but I, knew what, I do know what the movie is about. It's basically a town with this new kid and there's a new town called, oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a kid who's new in town. The kid is played by Kevin Bacon. And he moves into a new town where dancing is forbidden. I mean, look, I think they were clearly buying on the whole, listen, it's a movie. It's clearly fiction. It's not really meant to do much other than entertain you for however long the movie is. But a town that doesn't allow people to dance, they clearly were hoping that people would buy into the absurdity of the fictional world that Footloose takes in. Because I can tell you right now, like, I happen to know a lot of people who love to dance. And if you were to take that away from them, I mean, they'd still be able to function. I just don't know if they'd be able to, I don't know if they'd be truly happy with where they are. So, needless to say, support dancing. Really, you should support all the arts, but for the sake of talking about Footloose, I'll say support dancing. So, after the performances were done, someone had to get eliminated, and it was Showburn. And for the second week in a row, Ken Jeong got it right. It was uh, Yvette Nicole Brown from Community, which Ken did uh, work with her on. And, I mean, again, like, if I Nicole Brown, she's a phenomenal singer. Like, she totally killed the performance. It's just somebody had to get eliminated. But, right now, well, first of all, I don't know what's crazy. The fact that Ken got it right and the fact that Ken got it right twice in a row. With that, actually, I can't... We like to make, listen, Mass Singer fans like to groan and moan at all the suggestions that Ken has. But so far this season, Ken's actually done a really good job of guessing legitimately good answers. Like, or good guesses, I mean. I mean, he's gotten two unmaskings right, so he can't be doing that bad. But, I mean, he clearly plays it off as a joke that, like, he says, I know exactly who it is. And then he guesses someone that's, for the most part, rather absurd. But so far this season, Ken's actually been trying to keep it good. I mean, I'm sure those are famous last words. I'm sure Ken's going to make a guess that's completely ridiculous. But it's okay, Ken. I love you. In my heart, you are always allowed to be standing. <laughs> He's not going to see this. It'd be funny if he did that. Um, so... In regards to next week being the Group A Finals, which is the soundtrack of my life night, you have the Ship, the Woodpecker, and the Buffaloes. Now, every time there's ever like more than one person for being a contestant, say the Lambs, or the California Roll, or I think it was the snakes or the Vulcan strangers. And they had a costume. It was a snake related costume or, um, or the, or the, uh, or the beats. You're already like a shoe in to win just because strength and numbers or not a shoe in to win, but you're definitely going to be one of the better performances. With that said, I think next week, the woodpecker is going to win and going to be the one going on to the finale or at least the semifinals. I mean, don't get me wrong. The buffaloes, they're great. And the ship was also phenomenal. But 
maybe because I'm being a prisoner of the moment and holding out for a hero is definitely a song that, you know, I would like to be described as at some point. Just saying. Listen, man, every guy wants to be a big damn hero. Whether they realize it or not. I don't know, maybe I'll be the hero for some nice girl. I'm pretty cool. But on a serious note, maybe because I'm a prisoner of the moment, and maybe because Holding Out for a Hero is such a great song, it was reformed so well. Right now, I think the Woodpecker is going to be the one to move on to the group. I th to the, is going to be the one to move to the finale. But again, that's just me. I'm sure that, you know, um, I'll be wrong. I'm sure I'll probably be wrong. I'm sure the ship or the Buffaloes will peak at the right time. Or maybe the Woodpecker has a gear we don't know of yet. Who is to say? But with all that being said, it really was great reliving Footloose. I mean, again, for the on-team time at this point, I've never seen the movie, but I do know the music. And just the music alone is catchy as hell. But that's just me. So, I'm wearing the jersey. I have an NFL pick to make. Let's get that over with. Okay, so. This week we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Atlanta Falcons. Now, full stop. The Falcons really are a better team than their record suggests. I'm not saying that to be like, you know, oh, the Falcons are 2-2. Two two. Let's take pity on them and say, you know, they really are good. No, the Falcons really are good. I mean, they really ought to be 3-1 and one right now. And that one other win should have been against the Chiefs. Really. I'm, full stop, I really think the Falcons are good. I definitely do feel they'll be a wild card contender. Again, for at least a wild card. Win the division? No. For that, I would say it's either between the Saints, who I think is the dark horse in all the NFC, and Tampa Bay. Right now, Baker Mayfield is pretty much picking up right where he left off in terms of him being in Tampa Bay. Which I'm just saying right now, the Cleveland Browns never should have traded away Baker Mayfield. Not for the I mean, listen, you know what? I'm going to go on a rant here. They never should trade for Deshaun Watson, pretty much having known what he was doing. And not to mention, the Cleveland Browns were so stupid in getting Deshaun Watson like, I think it was like $230 million or like 191 guaranteed or something like that. They never should have given him that money because now the quarterback market is completely shot. And trust me, my Cowboys, whether I, whether I like it or not, you know, they're kind of paying for it. Don't get me wrong, I always have, listen, I had to put up with dealing with Tony Romo. I'll take Dak Prescott any day of the week. I'll defend Dak Prescott. But I can't help deny what I'm seeing. But I can't help deny what I'm looking at. You know, the quarterback market is completely shot. It's all because of what the Cleveland Browns did. Not to mention, after everything was finally cleared up with Deshaun Watson, and after he's been able to play, Deshaun Watson has been playing like complete utter garbage. He has been. I mean, the only reason why the Browns went to the playoffs wasn't because of him. It was actually because of Joe Flacco. Honestly, the only reason why the Browns can't part ways with him is because right now Deshaun Watson is under contract with him. Even though, really? Seriously, like, let me put this into perspective. Joe Flacco really was on his couch just about getting ready to retire. And the Browns give him a call and have him come back. And not only does he come back, he actually does really well. And takes the Browns to the playoffs again. Personally, I've always been a Joe Flacco fan. Frankly, I've been a fan of, Fac fan of Flacco since, um... Since around the time he was going to win that Super Bowl, which he did. And Super Bowl MVP too, which is also really cool. My point is, like, right now Baker Mayfield is definitely proving 
that the Browns never should have released him. In fact, he's actually proving that the Panthers never should have released him either. Unfortunately, both of them are organizations that really don't know what to do. I mean, he was with the Rams for a little bit, and, you know, I think he was just with the Rams just for, like, a one-year contract thing. That's fine. Especially when Baker Mayfield proved he was actually with... I mean, think about it. Baker Mayfield arrives in Los Angeles, has, like, barely a day and a half, two days max, to learn the schemes of how the system in Los Angeles Rams works, and he wins a game for him. Baker Mayfield... Okay, stay, man. The man woke up feeling dangerous. And I think that's going to prove here once again tonight. I'm thinking the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, I think the Bucs are going to be... I definitely feel the Bucs are going to make the playoffs this year. I definitely think that, you know... I mean, it's hard for me to say who the MVP of the league is right now. I mean... After this last, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for Buffalo losing, I really wouldn't be saying Josh Allen right now. But I mean, do not be surprised if at any point during the season we hear Baker Mayfield's name in his MVP contention because he's playing like one right now. I think tonight's only going to further prove that. So yeah, for tonight, I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was great listening to the music of Footloose last night. Let's get today over with because I want the weekend to be here. I hope you like this video. If you like to subscribe to YouTube channel, follow social media. As always, I have a home in this video for all of you guys watching. Join for We'll be have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Thursday. And remember, did I say happy Thursday this morning? Yeah, I did say happy Thursday. Oh, happy Thursday if I didn't say it already. And remember, if you guys want to talk to you, watch me here. Let me back. Take care and make good choices. 607 all day, baby.